Open defiance from Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel in the wake of an FIA rules clampdown has put a weird Formula 1 feud in the spotlight. The two most decorated drivers on the F1 grid have been the most prominent objectors to the FIA suddenly enforcing long-standing rules on jewellery and flame-proof underwear. Hamilton now appears to be locked in a standoff with the governing body that could result in him eventually being hit with a fine of more than $250,000 every time he drives the car. But this bizarre feud over nose piercings and pants also seems to be linked to a deeper divide between F1 and its governing body. Hamilton and Vettel have taken aim at the FIA over its new strict stance on drivers wearing jewellery and non-compliant underwear while driving. The FIA told teams back in Australia that changes were coming and that they had two races before compliance would be demanded. In Miami, teams were told that compliant underwear and the wearing of jewellery would be part of their pre-event scrutineering process with immediate effect. The FAA International Sporting Code says body piercings and metal neck chains are prohibited during the competition. Race director Niels Wittig informed teams in Miami that as far as the FIA is concerned, jewellery can increase the risk of burn injuries, slow down the emergency removal of driver safety equipment, hinder medical interventions and subsequent diagnosis and treatment, and cause further injury in a worst case scenario. While other drivers like Kevin Magnussen and Pierre Gasly have been drawn into this over wearing a wedding ring and a religious pendant respectively, Hamilton has been at the centre of the debate because he wears ear and nose piercings. In an act he has effectively admitted was a symbolic gesture, he turned up to the FIA press conference in Miami wearing multiple chains, rings and three different watches. Vettel escalated that in his own press conference when he suggested the FIA was making it more of a personal thing and in a particular way targeted to Lewis. Then in Mercedes first scrutineering declaration following the new mandate, the team did not initially confirm Hamilton was compliant with not wearing jewellery. After a meeting with FIA President Mohammed Ben Sulaim, Hamilton removed the jewellery from his ear but was given an exemption for the nose stud which he cannot take out on his own. This is initially valid for two races, although Hamilton says he has no plans to conform and we'll get into what that means in a bit. As for underwear, the FIA says that the use of non-flameproof materials in contact with the driver's skin and in particular synthetic materials can increase the risk of injuries in the event of a fire and can melt and hinder treatment in the event of a burn injury. The ISC says that drivers can only use normal underwear between their skin and the compulsory FIA approved underwear in case of justified medical reasons. Vettel has taken particular issue to this becoming such a big talking point in recent weeks. He feels that while safety is a priority, wearing personal items has never been a problem before and can therefore remain a personal choice. Ahead of Friday practice in Miami to poke fun at the matter on an even more public stage, he donned a pair of boxers over his race suit and made sure it was seen in the pit lane. Much like Hamilton's press conference stunt, this was a pantomime act. It looked a little silly, it got a few laughs and it seemed to be contributing to a non-issue escalating quite rapidly. But when two drivers of such stature with 11 world titles between them are happy to stick a symbolic middle finger up at the governing body, well then it all feels like a bit more than just a petty row. And we're about to tell you why that might be the case. But first, thanks for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please show us some love by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of our videos in the future. The rules regarding not wearing piercings or chains have been around since 2005, before Hamilton had even entered Formula 1. What's interesting is that they are suddenly being enforced, where the impetus for that has come from and the political context bubbling away in the background. We understand that while Wittig is obviously the enforcer of these rules, he's actually just the middleman. The instruction to be no nonsense has come from Ben Sulaim. The FIA's position is that the new president simply asked if the rules are being followed and then told Wittig to crack down when he learned they weren't. But others in F1 think there's a bit more to it. There's a divide emerging in the paddock between F1 and the FIA for the first time in years. It first became apparent after last year's Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. F1 CEO Stefano Domenicali was unhappy with the FIA's handling of the closing laps where errors contributed to the controversial conclusion in which Hamilton lost the race and the championship and the fallout from this as well. 
What should have been a much celebrated conclusion to a thrilling 2021 season title fight between Hamilton and Max Verstappen descended into several weeks if not months of criticism and accusations of the race being manipulated. Unofficially, F1 figures like Domenicali are believed to feel that the FIA handled that situation poorly and if anything, fueled the uproar by being slow to act and lacking transparency. More recently, Ben Sulayem has prompted complaints behind the scenes over the bid to get the number of sprint events increased to six next season. After teams blocked such a move for 2022, a recent F1 Commission meeting gained the necessary support to hold six sprint races in 2023, before Ben Sulayem apparently objected. The FAA says that more time is needed to do due diligence on the proposal. In public, the teams have said it requires more homework from the governing body. But privately, there have been claims that Ben Sulayem has simply demanded more money be given to the FIA to make it happen. For a while now, there have been murmurings of discontent over the FIA's role in the Formula 1 World Championship and exactly what its responsibility should be in the future. Revenue from F1 is understood to contribute more than half of the FIA's entire income, so Ben Sulayem's apparent attempts to get more money for the organisation have been poorly received. Ben Sulayem's role in the sprint debate and the clampdown on jewellery and underwear are high-profile examples of how he has already become more interventionist than his predecessor Jean Todt. In the space of a week, he's put some significant noses out of joint, first the teams and FOM, then the championship's two most successful drivers. F1's other stakeholders seem to feel the governing body might be overstepping its place as a regulator, making power plays in the F1 commission and being obtuse in applying the rules. In response, the FIA says this is not about picking fights and that no individuals are being targeted at all. They've also dismissed the suggestion that this is any kind of payback for Hamilton skipping the prize giving last year amid the Abu Dhabi fallout. After the Michael Massey era where people consistently complained the rules weren't being followed properly, it's typical of F1 to suddenly have a controversy over the rules being applied too strictly. But that's probably because the wider context points to a bigger row brewing, the influence of the new FIA president ruffling feathers and F1 beginning to wonder if something needs to change. We have to assume that the FIA is dead serious about the jewellery and underwear compliance and that it will stand its ground over this. And as we mentioned earlier in this video, Hamilton says he's not satisfied with how the jewellery clampdown has been resolved so far and doesn't intend to remove the piece he currently has an exemption for. He joked that when he spoke to the FIA, they told him safety is everything. So his response was that he's raced wearing jewellery for 16 years, so was safety not an issue back then? And he added, I got an exemption here, I'll get an exemption for the rest of the races. One of the reasons Hamilton remains defiant is that wedding rings may still be worn. This is because rings are not currently defined in the relevant appendix to the regulations, whereas piercings are. Other drivers have had to query whether items can be worn as well, such as the wrist strap that Fernando Alonso is wearing as a physical support following his crash in Australia. And watches were specifically added to the list of banned items by Vitic in an addition to his event notes over the Miami weekend. It is possible the rules will be amended further in the near future to clarify the situation. However, it's unclear whether Hamilton will continue to have an exemption if offers from him and Magnussen to sign a waiver taking responsibility away from the FAA will be taken into account or if the governing body will just stick to its guns. In that case, the stewards would likely end up needing to decide whether to punish drivers who continue to wear prohibited items and what that punishment would be. The punishment for not conforming is down to the stewards to decide, although it has been indicated that an escalating series of fines rising to $265,000 would be the likely outcome. FIA fines are always a sore matter for the drivers and such a high potential cost is clearly meant to be a big deterrent. But if Hamilton feels the FIA is guilty of double standards by allowing items like wedding rings or just simply doesn't want to comply, then this saga may repeat itself in Monaco after his current two race exemption ends. He hinted that could be the case, joking he'd turn up there wearing four watches in the press conference. So this peculiar feud remains very much an open issue for now. How it's resolved may point to how the FIA wishes to exercise its authority under its new leadership and that could have far bigger consequences beyond jewellery and underpants.